I'm Keith Dickinson, and this is my wife, Sue. We have the privilege of ministering here. We've been ministered to by this church for, what, 30-some years? At least. Yeah. And uh, I can say I feel like I'm in the best time of my life. I'm at that age where I don't have to report to work every day, and I can go all sing about Jesus and sing Jesus Loves Me and hug on people over at Four Corners Healthcare and and uh, visit our neighbors and uh, do with them and, and uh, as my friend um, Mr. Versaw the old potato farmer said this is the true greatest end of the life because you can worship Jesus anytime you want go and worship Jesus anywhere you want and he's always with you and, and you can take time to read the scriptures anytime you want they're not telling you you can't because you're at work. And, and so we have the great privilege of singing hymns with our elderly friends over at Four Corners Healthcare. One of the things that I've really enjoyed about the, the um, interacting with people at the health care center is that uh, you see people all the way that have had zero influence from the scripture, but there are also people who obviously know the Lord for their entire lives. And even when their their mind is not functioning clearly, uh, we get the joy of seeing them rehearse the songs and say, things that they've uh, they've known all their lives come back to them. Uh, we have one elderly lady who is who um, led ch child evangelism for years in New Mexico, and she can't speak, she can't hardly carry on a conversation, but she can sing along with "Jesus Loves Me" in the choruses of those famous songs. And they all know the Lord's Prayer. And even in the Alzheimer's unit, when we have a chance to visit there, it's obvious there's a few there who grew up in the church and know those songs and they can sing along. So I, I feel that they probably have some ministry of being encouraged. But it encourages us, too, to see the input from people who've known the Lord all their lives. And even at the end of life, they are taking comfort in knowing the Lord. We've had the privilege of seeing two elderly people come to know the Lord over there. One uh, old man was really tough to get along with. They couldn't keep a roommate with him or anything. And, uh, he was an interesting fellow. I used to take pictures down of old tractors and stuff and get him talking. And One day uh, Ray Compton went in there and was visiting with him and he says, You know what you need? You need to know Jesus. And the guy says, well, I suppose it's about time I do accept him. And so they prayed together, and then it wasn't but a couple of months later he passed, and I was there when the family was, and I was able to share with them that uh, Frank had, had accepted Jesus, and the lady goes, she just went pale. She says, you know, his brothers and sisters had prayed for him for 60-some years. And to go home and tell him that he finally allowed Jesus to take hold of his life. She says, that was the best news we've had in months and weeks. And, and then there was another fellow, one of the ladies, Wendy Cross was nursing there that afternoon. And there was a, a man, not that old, but he was in serious condition. And uh, she asked uh, I or Matt Bong to come over visit with him. Well, Matt was available, and Matt went over there and shared Jesus with him, and he became a believer, and oh, it was it was just such a change to see how he treated the nurses, and how he talked, and his biggest regret was, he says, oh, of all the dumb things I've ever said in my life, when I die, they're going to paste them all over the wall, and then when we went to his funeral, sure enough, ever dumb quote he had ever made was being projected on this screen behind where the speaker was in this powerhouse. And I'm just feeling, oh, I wish, I, you know, you just wish you could, could have known the Lord about 50 years earlier. <laughs> One of the other encouraging things that is encouraging for me is to see people who've loved the Lord all their lives and they still are eager to share the word uh, Dorothy Myers was uh, reading one day when I went to visit with her and she was reading a, a little devotional book that someone had given her and she said, I'm just looking for the exact story to be able to share the gospel with some of these people. And then I get a chance to visit with one of the other ladies who 
is there because of physical um, limitations and um, just the insight that she has as counseling she we were just conversing the other day she said you know you can share the Lord with people um, but in the counseling that I've done I people want to want to help um, I tell them you may not see the end result of what you're doing but you minister as you go along and then the Lord gives the increase like Paul said Paul watered Apollo uh, Paul planted <laughs> Apollo watered but God gave the increase it's all that's all the Lord's doing in these lives yeah it's but we we had the privilege of meeting lots of people in the neighbor you know because of parents or people being in four corners uh, one of our favorites is a lady that lives over by a school and she's 98 years old and if you'll ask her about her year oh it's just been such a good year while i was in the hospital five times but it's still such a good year and uh, she was just totally excited about us reading the scripture with her and we were able to get her a uh, set like thing with all the scriptures on it that fits her uh, machine for the blind. And uh, she's been listening to that. I don't know how many hours a day she listens to it, but she says, oh, it is so good just to hear the scriptures. Here.